lesson six, strategic solving. The triangle and the square have equal perimeters. Okay, so this is four point, excuse me, 6.1. The triangle and the square have equal perimeters. Find the value of X. What is the perimeter of each figure? So we have two tasks to complete here. Let's review perimeter. Perimeter is the sum of all sides. So to find the perimeter, we add all of the sides up. Something else that's important to note, it says that these two shapes have equal perimeters. So the perimeter of the triangle is equal to the perimeter of the square. So that's some information that would be good to know because we need to find the value of X. So if the perimeter is adding all four sides or all three sides, take a minute and I want you to write an expression for what would the perimeter of the triangle look like what would the perimeter of the square look like? So if I rewrote this as perimeter of the triangle equals perimeter of the square, instead of this, I want the expression. So if the sides are added up, what does the perimeter of the triangle look like? And then the square. So if these sides get added, we get 2x plus 2x plus x minus 8. Right, that's the perimeter of the triangle. Now the square. Well, wh remember what you know about squares. All four sides are the same length. So what does the expression for the perimeter of the squares look like? Take a second and write the perimeter out as an expression. You should have something like x plus 2 plus x plus 2 plus x plus 2 plus x plus 2. Now another option that someone hopefully did You could have also written this as a distributive property type setup. X plus two is going to be added four times because of the four sides. And if you distributed this, you'll see in a second that you get the same thing. So if you wrote like this, awesome. That is definitely accepted. So we need to find the value of X, which means I need to do some equation solving. If we think back to lesson five and the, the steps from the summary, the, one of the first things we want to start doing is simplifying. So if you imagine the hangers, we have all of these different pieces on each side. Let's kind of combine them together on the sides so that we really know what we're, what we're dealing with. So I want to take a look on the left side and see what I can actually kind of clean up. So if you look here, I have an X, an X, an X. So together, two, four, I have five X's minus eight. And on the right side, I've got one, two, three, four X's and two, four, six, eight. So I just simplified a little bit so that we could kind of keep track of everything. I just combined like terms. Remember, X's add to X's. Now we're going to solve because we need to figure out X. You can choose whichever part you want to eliminate first. Definitely choose whatever you like. You don't have to choose what I'm choosing. We'll get the same answer if you do everything correctly. But I'm going to eliminate this 4x. I want to eliminate 4 positives, so I'm going to use 4 negatives. 5 minus 4 is 
just one X, bring down my negative eight, and all I have on the right side is a positive eight. Get our X's on one side by themselves and the numbers on the other. So I need to eliminate this negative eight. A negative eight and a positive eight is zero. Whatever I do to the left, I have to do to the right. So I have x equals 16. So let's come back over here. x equals 16. Now that doesn't even give me the perimeter. That just gives me the value of x. Number two asks for the perimeter. What's the perimeter of each figure? So to find that, I'm going to substitute the x's with 16. So every time I see an x, I'm going to replace it with a 16. Now remember, the perimeter is everything being added together. So, you know, we can write this out in work. You can make notes on your picture. However you want to do it, I need you to figure out the perimeter of the triangle and the perimeter of the square. So hit pause and figure that out. I'm going to go ahead and work this out while you do it. So check your work. You should have gotten 72 for the perimeter of the triangle. And then I'm going to do the square so you can work this out with me. I won't talk so that you can try this without having to hear what I say. Pause it if you're not ready. But for the square, my perimeter is also 72, which it should be because they told us that the perimeters are equal. Now, on a side note, because I had all addition, the order that I add those don't matter. It doesn't matter. So I, I just kind of grouped them so that I didn't have to do a lot of arithmetic. But just in case you struggled a little bit with this, just so you could see where I got my information, the x plus 2 were just the sides that I had to add together. For the triangle, there are my three sides, 2x, 2x, x minus 8. So there will be times where you have some information that you're given. You've got to create equations, create expressions in order to determine the answer because we can't find the perimeter if we don't know what x equals. So the first step is actually figuring out what x equals before we can even get the perimeter that we're, that we're asked to get. So some things I want you to think about and um, determine here is, is this the same process you would have used? You know, when you cut, when you look over at the equation here, try solving it a different way using correct math, but maybe you want to eliminate the five X instead of the, the four, or maybe you want to eliminate one of the numbers instead. So just know that there isn't 
only one possible way to deal with these. All right. The next activity we're going to take a look at determining whether a solution has a positive answer, a negative answer, or zero. Okay. So without solving, identify whether the equations have a solution that's positive, negative, or zero. So I want you to take a second Hit pause, and don't make it big or anything. Um, just off to the side, make a little note of whether you think the solution is positive, negative, or zero. So do that on one, two, three, and four. Five, six, seven. So just take a minute and determine, do you think the value is positive, negative, or zero? So let's talk for a second about why this would be important. So if you can come up with an idea of the type of answer, or the type of solution you're going to get, it's a good way to check yourself to know whether you're on the right track. Okay. So this can help you decide, did I get a correct solution? Am I close to the correct solution? So if we look at number one, number one is, is kind of interesting because we have x over six on the left and three x over four on the right. And it might be hard to even figure out, would it be positive, would it be negative, or would it be zero without solving? because this is kind of strange. So if I back up a little bit, and maybe let's look at something that doesn't have fractions. Okay, so for example, 5x equals 6x. It's very similar, let me move this. It's very similar in that I've got an x on the left, I've got an x on the right, I don't have anything being added or subtracted. So in this case, could you say we're looking at a positive solution or a negative solution or a zero? And you should still be a little bit confused. There's nothing wrong if you're still a little confused because again, it's you're probably thinking what x could be possible? Because if I if x is if there's only one value for x, if I have five of them on the left and six of them on the right, how could that ever be balanced? So even if, if you look at a hanger again, if I had five x's on this side and I have six on this side, you might be thinking, how could that ever be balanced? There's only one way that these could be balanced, and that is if x equals zero. If I substitute the x with a zero, five times zero is zero. Six times zero is zero. So if you have x is on each side, no constants, no numbers, like being added or subtracted, you're going to end up with a zero as your answer. Only x's on each side. There's no constant for the x to be equal to once I start moving things, right? So let's look at two for a minute. Again, we're not solving anything. Okay, so not solving a thing. I just want to know, is the answer going to be positive, negative, or zero? 
Well, this one, hopefully you said positive. Whatever I multiply by seven is going to end up being a positive number. So X has to be positive. Because a positive amount of X's is going to equal a positive number. Because seven times a positive is going to equal a positive, right? Now, if you struggled the first time, I want you to look at three and I want you on your own, push pause and determine the answer for three, positive, negative, zero. You should also have positive and it's positive for the same reason that number three is positive. That's a multiplication, not X. Seven times a positive is going to equal a positive, right? Or any number for that matter. A number times a positive equals positive. How about four? For four, if we look at the left side, 3x plus 11 has to equal 11. So the 3x's plus 11 has to equal 11. If I had this on a hanger, you guys know I love my hangers. I'm not going to draw 11 things, but we're still going to picture it. If this weighs 11 and this weighs 11, I have three X's over here and I'm telling you they're balanced. The X's have to weigh nothing, right? These have to weigh nothing so that 11 and 11 stay equal. So this is a zero. Three X has to end up equaling zero so, oops, so that 11 equals 11. If 3x has to equal zero, then that means x has to equal zero. Let's look at five. Now remember, if I move too fast, pause and rewind to get the information you need. So now let's think about five. So five, you're going to hopefully get positive. Let's think about this. There are a couple different ways that you could explain this. I'm going to have nine minus some number, right? Nine minus some number has to equal four. So nine subtract a number e gets smaller. So nine minus a number is going to get smaller. Well, it's gotta be a positive because my nine is getting smaller, yet my answer is still positive. So for example, um, nine minus five, right? This would have to be five for this to work out. Nine minus five would equal four. Five is positive. And that's because I'm subtracting a number from nine and it's the nine is getting smaller. So I need to have a positive number with a negative little reminder. If I had a negative number, subtracting a negative is the same as adding the positive. 
keep opposite opposite. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So if I was subtracting a negative number here, I would really end up adding and nine gets smaller and you can't really, that doesn't really work out. So keep that in mind. I'll, I'll give you something to write, but if you have your own explanation, that would be good. So, 9 minus a positive number will equal a smaller number. All right, let's try 6. 6 is finally our first negative. So let's think about that for a second. If we use the same type of thought process as five, I have a negative number plus, so I have a negative number plus some unknown is going to equal a negative. Well, the only way to get a negative is if I add two negatives. Negative plus a negative equals a negative. So for 5x to become a negative number, x would have to be negative. Now I'm going to tell you number 7 is positive and you're going to come up with your own explanation as to why. I know it doesn't look like the others, but there's enough, you know enough, and there's en enough from the other numbers that you could probably figure out why that's positive. And again, this is a good practice to do because not knowing what type of answer you should expect can cause you to not catch a mistake. So if you're looking at the equation and you're like, hold on, this really should be positive. Why did I get a negative? You can go back to your work and figure out what happened. Okay, the next section is 6.3. Which would you rather solve? So here are a lot of equations. Without solving, identify three equations that you think would be the least difficult and three that you think would be the most difficult. So take a minute and identify which would be the least difficult and which will be the most difficult. So jot down which letters would be the least difficult, which would be the most. So hit pause and do that. Okay, oh, oops, sorry. <laughs> so what you need to do is we're, you're going to solve three equations. Now, I'm going to solve two with you, and then you're going to pick a third to solve on your own. Okay, so I'm going to choose one that I think would be, um, I think one that I think would be easier would be C, and I think a more difficult one would be A. I think C would be less difficult because I feel pretty confident being able to like deal with the four that's down in the denominator and the, the two that's being distributed. I feel like A would be difficult because there's a lot going on. I've got fractions and negatives on both sides and that just looks like it's a mess. So we're going to solve A and C together and then you're going to pick a third that you're going to solve on your own. 
All right, so we'll start with C. Okay, so we will start with C. So C is 10 minus V over four equals two times the quantity V plus 17. So I like this one because I feel like I could handle this four in the denominator um, by, if, if I'm dividing the left side by four, I can undo that by multiplying by four. Those fours cancel. And if I multiply one side by four, I have to multiply the other side by four. So on the left, I get 10 minus V. And on the right, really all I have to do is multiply the four times two because the eight is going to get distributed. I'm gonna come back to the four in a second, but I get eight V plus eight times 17 is 136. So if I back up here for a second, when I multiply this right side by four, if you think about this, if I would have distributed the two first, it would have been two times V So if I, I'm going to sidestep here. Let's say I distributed first before I multiplied by four. So if I distributed first, I would get 2V plus 34. Then if I distributed, it would be four times 2V is 8V, four times 34 is 136. So I still get the same expression. It's because I'm multiplying four times this, then two times this, so the order doesn't really matter because it's all multiplication. So now from here, it's the type of equation that we've solved a few times. So I want to eliminate the minus V, so I'm going to add a V to both sides. and I get 10 equals 9V plus 136. Again, our first steps are adding or subtracting from both sides to get my Vs on one side and my constants on the other. So I have a positive 136 that I want to get off of the right, so I need to combine it with negative 136. 10 minus 136 or 10 and negative 136 is negative 126. These cancel and I have 9V. So again, once I simplify, this is the section where I'm adding and subtracting, right? So this was the section where I, sorry, that's the section I simplified. Actually, it comes down to here. Then this is the section where I'm adding and subtracting. And then once I have my variables on one side and my numbers on the other, that's when we started breaking up what was on each side of our hanger. So if I have nine Vs, I need to know what equals one V. So I'm gonna take these nine Vs and I'm gonna break them into nine even groups or nine equal groups. And a negative 126 divided by nine is negative 14. So give yourself a minute to get all that copy down. And remember that there's nothing, it looks big and it looks intimidating possibly, but the process is pretty consistent. We want 
the main goal is to get the variable on one side and the constant on the other and just keep imagining the hanger situation. How did we handle those hangers? And that will help. So pause if you have to to get the work copied. This is not required over there. But definitely make a note of these sections here. That's the simplify section. Then we have the section where, let me make that look better, where we add or subtract. Then we have a section where we multiplied and divided. So hit pause and get that down. All right now we're going to look at C. Let's try to tackle C. Oof. I'm sorry, not C, A. Now with A, we have sixes and we have Bs. So please make sure you can tell the difference between your sixes and your Bs. So maybe have the sixes look kind of loopy. With my Bs, I'll kind of have them stick out the bottom or maybe use a capital B. Or if you're worried that you won't be able to tell, pick a different letter, X. All right. So we've got to figure out how we're going to handle this. I have five, I have six as a denominator on the left and I have three as a denominator on the right. Now my first, my first instinct is to deal with the denominator of a six. Part, is it, part of it is because it's on the left, but the other thing is if I multiply the left side by six or six over one, my sixes here are going to cancel. Now remember, because negative five sixth is being distributed, it's multiplication, I can actually wipe it, wipe out that six before I distribute anything. If you think back to one of the equations from yesterday, we use that method. Earlier in um, one of the examples, in the section prior to this, there was something like this that happened. Now what's kind of neat is on this side, if I multiply by six, let me put it as a fraction, because my denominator is a three, I actually have a nice little situation that happens over here, but we're gonna look at that a little differently in a second. So I have a negative five left over when I cancel here. Now on this side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a second and do this. Okay, the reason why I expanded that out is because I just want you to see how to handle that fraction, just a little more clear. So 75 times six, oh, hold on. is 450. Now what's going to happen here is if I were to cross cancel, the three becomes a one and a six becomes a two. So I get 10 B. Now on the left side, I'm gonna come back and I'm going to distribute. I get negative 40 plus negative 25B, negative times a positive, right? We can put parentheses just to kind of keep those looking a little cleaner, equals 450 plus 10B. This was crazy. 
you won't, you shouldn't see anything that ever gets hard, much harder than that. So this first section right here, and take a second and label it. This was the section where we simplified. So now we're to the point where we've got variables and constants on each side. So this is where we're down to like the hanger situation. Okay. So now is the section where we are going to add or subtract. So we're going to be adding and removing from each side. I'm going to pick the variables first. I like getting the, the variables on one side first. And if you haven't noticed, I also like handling specific variables. Negative 25 is smaller than positive 10. So what's going to happen is when I combine the negative 25 and the positive and they get zero, what's going to happen for me is because I chose the smaller, I'm actually going to end up with like a nicer situation over on the on this side. If I did negative 10b, I would end up with negative 35 and it just I avoiding negatives if I if possible is is always nice. So I got my b's on the on the right side together. Now I need to get the numbers to the other. So in order to get 450 to the other side, I need to eliminate it with a negative 450. Negative 40 plus negative 450 is negative 490 equals 35B. And that concludes my adding and subtracting section. Remember, the adding and subtracting section is to get the variables on one side and the numbers on the other, right? That's the goal here. So my final section, I have 35 Bs on the right, but I want to know how much 1 B is. So in order to find out how much 1 B is, Remember, I have variables before. Now I just want the single variable, right? If I have 35 Bs, I want to break that up into 35 groups. I'm going to break each side up into 35 groups. So this is the section where we multiply and divide, right? Negative 490 divided by 35 is negative 14. And you 100% need to use a calculator, for sure. So again, this is as crazy as it's going to get. This was a lot. So your job now is to pick one more to try by yourself. I'm actually going to jot down for you the answers to each so that you can check yourself. The answer is going to do you no good if you don't have the steps. So pause and copy if you need to. Rewind if you have to, but get that all copied down. So I'm going to run you through the key really quick. Just so that when you choose your questions or your equations, you can check your answers. And you can take a minute with me and write down the key. Just so you have it. All right, so hit pause and make sure you get that copy down. And that's it.